we're asked to evaluate the triplet integral where f of x comma y comma z equals x plus z divided by three, u equals the quantity two x minus y divided by two, v equals y divided by two, and w equals z divided by three. We will use the equations for u, v, and w to perform a change of variables in order to evaluate the triplet integral. We'll be using the formula below to perform the change of variables. Notice on the left, we have a triple integral in terms of x, y, and z. On the right, we have a triple integral in terms of u, v, and w. And also notice how we have the integrating factor, or the Jacobian. To begin, let's list the intervals of integration for x, y, and z of the original integral. The interval of integration for x is from y divided by two to y divided by two plus three. The interval of integration for y is from zero to three and the interval of integration for z is also from zero to three. We'll begin by determining the new intervals of integration or limits of integration for u, v, and w in just a moment. For the next step, let's change the form of the equation for u. Notice right now we have u equals the quantity two x minus y divided by two, which we can write as two x divided by two minus y divided by two, and therefore u equals x minus y divided by two and we'll leave the equations for v and w the same. And now we need to form equations for x, y, and z in terms of u, v, and w. We'll notice that y divided by two is equal to v, and therefore we can write the first equation as u equals x minus v, and then if we solve this equation for x, we have x equals u plus v. And then we'll solve the second equation for y by multiplying both sides by two, which gives us y equals two v, and then we'll solve the third equation for z by multiplying both sides by three, which gives us z equals three w. And now we'll begin with the lower limit of integration for x, or x equals y divided by two, and write this in terms of u. We now know x equals u plus v, and we know y divided by two is equal to v. So solving this equation for u, we have u equals zero, which gives us a lower limit of integration for u. And then starting with the upper limit of integration for x, which is x equals y divided by two plus three, we substitute u plus v for x, we substitute v for y divided by two, and then solve for u, which gives us u equals three. And therefore three is the upper limit of integration for u. Or we can say the interval of integration for u is from zero to three. And now we'll find the limits of integration for v using the limits of integration for y. So we know that y is equal to zero. We also know y is equal to two v, which gives us the equation two v equals zero, and therefore v equals zero. The upper limit of integration for y is y equals three. Again, replacing y with two v, and solving we have v equals three halves. So now we know the limits of integration for v, or the interval of integration for v, is from zero to three halves. And now moving along to z, the lower limit for z is z equals zero, we know z is equal to three w, giving us the equation three w equals zero. Solving for w, we have w equals zero. The upper limit is z equals three. Again, z equals three w. Solving for w, we have w equals one. So now we know the interval of integration for w is from zero to one. Next, we'll write the function f of x comma y comma z in terms of u, v, and w, and then we'll find the Jacobian. So we know f of x comma y comma z equals x plus z divided by three. We also know x is equal to u plus v, and z divided by three is equal to w, which gives us a new function of f equals u plus v plus w. Now for the last step, we need to find the Jacobian. The Jacobian is equal to the determinant of the three by three matrix, where the entries are shown here in the lower right-hand corner. I've already set this up, but let's check the entries in the three by three matrix. In row one, we begin with a partial of x with respect to u, and we know x is equal to u plus v. If we differentiate u plus v with respect to u, treating v as a constant, we do get one. The next entry is the partial of x with respect to v, so we differentiate u plus v with respect to v, treating u as a constant, which is also one. The third entry in row one is the partial of x with respect to w. There is no w, and therefore the partial derivative is zero. In row two, we have the partial of y with respect to u, y equals two v. The derivative of two v with respect to u, treating v as a constant is zero. Next, we have the partial of y with respect to v. The derivative of two v with respect to v is two. The last entry in row two is the partial of y with respect to w. There is no w, and therefore the partial derivative is zero. 
And then finally in row three, we have the partial of z with respect to u, z equals three w. The derivative of three w with respect to u is zero, treating w as a constant. Next, we have the partial of z with respect to v. There is no v, the partial derivative is zero. And then finally, we have the partial of z with respect to w. The derivative of three w with respect to w is three. To evaluate the determinant, I used the expansion by minors method using row two, since row two had two zero entries. The three by three determinant is equal to the entry of two times negative one raised to the power of two plus two times the determinant of the two by two matrix where the entries are one, zero, zero, three. Remember, we obtain these entries by eliminating the row and column of the entry two or eliminating row two and column two which leaves the entries of one, zero, zero, three. So here we have two times negative one to the fourth power, which is two, and then times the two by two determinant, which is equal to three minus zero or three, two times three is six. So now we know the Jacobian, or the integrating factor, is six. Now that we have all the pieces, we can form the new triple integral and evaluate. On the left, we have the original triple integral. On the right, we have the new triple integral under the change of variables. We have the function u plus v plus w times the Jacobian as an integrand function. And then we have du dv dw, where the limits of integration for u are from zero to three. Limits of integration for v are from zero to three halves. The limits of integration for w are from zero to one. Let's go ahead and distribute the six before we start integrating. The integrand function is six u plus six v plus six w. And now we integrate with respect to u which gives us six times u squared divided by two, or three u squared, plus six uv, plus six uw. And now we need to find big F of three minus big F of w by performing substitution for u. So when u is equal to three, we get 27 plus 18v plus 18w, and when u is equal to zero, we get zero. And now we integrate with respect to v, the antiderivative is 27v plus 18 times v squared divided by two, which simplifies to nine v squared plus 18 vw. And now we need to find big F of three halves minus big F of zero by performing substitution for v. For big F of three halves, we have 27 times three halves plus nine times the square of three halves plus 18 times three halves times w, which does simplify to 27w and big F of zero is zero. Continuing on the next slide, if we simplify the integrand function, we get 243 fourths plus 27w, and now we finally integrate with respect to w. The antiderivative is 243 fourths w plus 27 times w squared divided by two, or plus 27 halves w squared. And now we find big F of one minus big F of zero, which gives us 297 fourths or as a decimal, 47.25. I hope you found this helpful.